Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at Dreamforce this year. If you're a mobile app developer in the audience, I have an exciting secret to share with you. This secret is that you can build fully custom mobile apps connected to your Salesforce data while letting Salesforce write the most difficult, frustrating, and time-consuming parts of the code for you for free. And over the next 15 minutes, I'll show you how. My name is Galen. I'm a product manager on Salesforce's mobile SDK team. Before we jump in, we have our forward-looking statements. Anything that I say about the future, about roadmap, is subject to change. So there are many ways to build mobile apps at Salesforce. Mobile SDK is the most flexible of these solutions. And what I mean by flexible is that you can build apps in any way you want, very custom UIs. You get to choose what technology you want to code with, from native apps to hybrid and cross-platform with React Native. And when you build with mobile SDK, we give you the entire foundation, everything that you see here. And by foundation, I mean user authentication, secure online and offline data storage, syncing to the cloud, push notifications, and of course, connection to your Salesforce data. We take care of all the nuts and bolts so that you as the app developer can focus on delivering the best possible UX to your users. And even if you don't think you've heard of mobile SDK, there's a good shot that you're already using it today. Who here has used the Salesforce mobile app before? That's built with mobile SDK. Same with the other Salesforce mobile apps like Trailhead Go, Salesforce Field Service, all built on top of mobile SDK. And outside of Salesforce, there are over 3,000 other apps that our customers have built with mobile SDK. And these range from big companies, Fortune 500 companies, to smaller companies, companies of many different industries, all building with mobile SDK. And mobile SDK is continuing to grow and launch exciting new updates. We actually just launched our 11.0 that includes a couple of exciting new features, one of which is biometric authentication, so you can add features like Face ID to your apps. Another is multi-app SSO. So some of our customers have over 30 different apps built with mobile SDK. And you can imagine if you're a user, you don't want to have to log into each one individually. Multi-app SSO lets you log into one and then be logged in to all the rest automatically. And of course, we're continuing to modernize and upgrade and support the latest iOS, the latest Android, latest hybrid technologies. But rather than just telling you how powerful mobile SDK is and how easy it is to build with it, I'd rather show you. And to do that, I built my very own Dreamforce app with mobile SDK. And I'll walk you through it in a second. But the idea of this app is we're all at Dreamforce. We're meeting a ton of different people. We might want to save the contact information of those people and sync it to Salesforce. And that's what this app lets you do. In the process, it shows a lot of the key features of mobile SDK. So let's go to the app. So here's my app. You can see at first glance, it looks pretty similar to the Contacts app in the iPhone. We have a list of contacts. We can scroll through it. We can go into the details of an individual contact, view the details. We can click this plus button at the top to let you add a new contact. To get to this point, to get to what you see on the screen, I hardly had to write any code at all. And that's because of mobile SDK templates. So with mobile SDK templates, you can go to our GitHub page, do a Git clone, and in seconds, you can spin up your app. In this case, I'm building an iPhone app, so I picked one of our Swift templates. But that got me up and running with all the features that I talked about at the start, user authentication, the basic UI up and running. All I did was I added a couple of features that I'll show you in a second, and I changed the title, wrote a little bit of front-end code to make the UI my own. Another thing you can't see just by looking at this app right now is that it works offline. So let's go and add a contact. We click that plus button, enter the fields. Let's say we bump into this guy named Mark Benioff. Before I save it, I'm going into airplane mode. So we have no internet. We save that contact. We can see it shows up at the top. So the app works offline. Of course, this isn't in Salesforce yet. We need to sync to Salesforce to do that. We need internet to do that. But the app works offline. And this offline functionality turns out is actually very important to a lot of our mobile SDK customers. And one example is a large home services company. For now, we can call them Homeforce. Of course, that's not the real name. But Homeforce employs 
thousands of technicians whose job it is to go to your house and fix your home appliances. And they do that using an app built with mobile SDK. So you can imagine they need a mobile app, they're viewing their appointment details, they're navigating to their customers' houses, they're updating their inventory data, which is stored in Salesforce. They need a mobile app, they also need it to work offline. And with Smart Store and Mobile Sync, two key SD mobile SDK features, we're able to give that to them. Okay, so I showed you a second ago how I can add a contact manually by typing in my information into the fields. What if we want to just scan someone's Dreamforce badge and do that automatically? So I was able to add this feature that lets us do that. And to show you, let's go back to our app, click to add a new contact, and we can see this button that I added, scan QR code. And I actually printed out my very, my very own Dreamforce badge that you guys can see here. So I'm going to open up my iPhone's camera, I'm going to scan that QR code and add it to Salesforce. Hope it works. So we open it up. There's all you guys in the audience. Say hi. <laughs> and here's my Dreamforce badge. And I'm just going to scan it. And there we go. That form is populated. I didn't have to type it in myself. We can save it to Salesforce. These are ordered alphabetically by last name, so there's my contact. So I can show you how I coded it really quickly, but it's actually all Swift UI. So I added a UI view that handles opening up the camera, scanning the QR code. That QR code stores a string, and that string, we parse it here, and that has all my contact information in it. So this is how we're using it to populate the form. And then we save it to Salesforce, we save it to SmartStore. But this code isn't actually really that important. The key is that we can build some really unique, really powerful stuff because mobile SDK isn't holding you back in the way that you use Salesforce data. In this case, I wanted to take a QR code, I wanted to scan it, I wanted to put it into Salesforce to save a contact. It doesn't matter. However you want to interact with Salesforce data, mobile SDK has you covered because it's very flexible. And it turns out that one of our customers actually built a very similar feature today. So one of our customers is a large grocery store chain, and they used mobile S SDK to build a barcode scanning feature where their employees at these grocery stores can get their phone, open up their camera, scan the barcode on a grocery store item, and they can use that to check their inventory data. They can see how many of that item are in stock. They can see the price of that item. That's all done with mobile SDK. And the final feature that I want to show you is how I added biometric authentication to this app. So I'm going to quit out of the app in a second. That's going to end my session. So next time I open it, I'm going to have to log in. I'm going to have to authenticate. So I'm quitting out and opening it back up. And you can see we logged in with Face ID. So behind the scenes, there's a lot going on there. Mobile SDK is saying, hey, lock the data, prevent the user from interacting with the app until the user has completed Face ID. For us as the app developer, it's three lines of code. And I can show you that code. So if we go to our app delegate file, it's these three lines that I'm highlighting here. First, we get an instance of the biometric authentication manager from Salesforce Manager. This is all in our documentation. Next, we enable it in the UI. And finally, we opt the user in to using Face ID. In this case, I've just opted myself into using it you as the developer could build a UI flow that lets your user click a box to opt themselves in. For now, I've just set opt in to true for simplicity. And that's our demo. So first, we started with an app template that got you off the ground, up and running with all the key features, smart store, mobile sync. We can sync to the cloud. Then I added QR scanning as a way to show that we can extend our apps with native device functionality. And finally, we added Face ID at the end. That's mobile SDK. At this point, I want to hand it over to Angela to talk about another way to build mobile apps with Salesforce, Mobile Publisher. All right, thanks, Galen. So we just talked about how you can use mobile SDK to build your own bespoke mobile applications. But mobile SDK actually powers one of our own low-code tools, which is Mobile Publisher. So with Mobile Publisher, customers who have experience sites can build their own branded mobile applications with clicks and not code. You'll get all of those really great authentication features that Galen just talked about, but you'll also have access to native capabilities such as barcode scanning, uh, persistent login, biometric authentication, and geolocation. And since mobile, uh, 
Since Mobile Polisher is tied to your experience site, anytime you update your experience site, it'll automatically push that update into your mobile application. So you'll have a consistent experience. And finally, with Mobile Publisher, we'll take care of assembling and publishing your application directly to the Apple app or the Google Play Store. This also means that any of the iOS or Android updates will automatically be synced to your application without you having to write a single line of code. So let's take a deep dive into what Mobile Publisher looks like. Actually, uh, sorry. There we go. So, I have here my Capricorn Health app, which is a health application uh, that will allow me to find a doctor that's nearby in case I need medical care. So looks like not my face, so I'm going to have Galen try again since it's his phone. <laughs> so it demonstrates that a biometric, biometric authentication. So here we have an, an ex experienced cloud site that um, will allow me to go ahead and look for doctors that are near me. So let's say I was walking around Dreamforce in my heels, tripped, and so now I need to go see a doctor. So I'm going to have that geolocation, which is native capability, built into this application. And boom, it knows that I'm here in Moscone West, and it is very short distance for me to go find my nearest doctor. So then I can also then go into my appointments and look for when my next appointment is with the doctor so I can get some medical help. I'll go ahead and scroll down here. And it should show me my upcoming appointments. But as we know, that syncing your calendar is going to be really important, and I hate going back in between apps. So I can easily use this feature called Add to Calendar. And it says, boom, added to my local calendar. But let's check to see that it's actually added to my Apple calendar. And that was on the 20th. And here I see Rachel's appointment with Dr. Capricorn. So we see all of these really great features that are surfaced uh, underlying from mobile SDK, but then we are able to extend it over to our customers uh, who use Mobile Publisher as well. So I'll hand it back over to Galen uh, to share what's on our roadmap for mobile SDK in 12.0. Awesome. So as we look ahead to our 12.0, mobile SDK has a few exciting features planned. Two of them are native login and headless APIs. So Mobile SDK already takes care of authentication for you. What these two features mean is that starting in our 12.0, you'll have complete control over what those login UIs look like. So as I mentioned, some of our customers have over 30 different apps built with Mobile SDK. Now, it all uses the same backend, but they'll be able to build potentially 30 different UIs for login if that's what their users want. Next, we have OTPs. We're probably all familiar with OTPs. You've probably used them before. They're one-time passwords valid for a single session. This can be implemented by the developer in one of two ways. You could either add it as an extra layer of authentication, so your users log in, and then they get sent an OTP. Or it could be an alternative UX for authentication, meaning that your users do not have to remember and store and type in a password to authenticate. And as always, we're continuing to modernize. And this really comes down to trust. Trust is our number one value at Salesforce. We want developers to trust that when you build with mobile SDK, you can be building the most modern apps out there. So our engineers work really hard to make sure that we're always upgrading to support the latest iOS, the latest Android, the latest hybrid technologies.
If you're interested in learning more, feel free to scan these resources for more information about Mobile SDK. Thank you.